Hi, I'm Linda Tai, and welcome to our program, Path to Peace. I'm here today with two very special women, very excited about what they're doing, Debbie Owen and Wendy Williams. Debbie is a parent coach, and Wendy is a marriage educator. Uh, tell us a little bit about you. Sure. So I am Debbie Owen, and I am, am a certified parent and life coach. And prior to becoming a coach, I spent many years as a public school teacher as well. So I've got a lot of experience dealing with kids and all variety of circumstances. And my husband and I um, have raised three children into young adulthood successfully. So that's always a great thing also. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And I'm Wendy Williams. And I have a background as a health uh, coach, if you will. I was a registered nurse for many years, not with the word coach after, but I was a registered nurse for many years in the greater Boston area. And now I've transferred my health and wellness information and interest into the marriage arena. And I've been married myself for 18 years as of this past June, and I have two stepsons. Excellent. Um, I have been married the same amount of time. <laughs> so, and I'm certain that the many of us out there who are married could use some coaching. So tell me, Wendy, what what is exactly is a marriage coach a or a mar marriage educator? Yeah, right. sure. No, a marriage educator. It's different than marriage therapy or marriage counseling, which is kind of a more of a common use. Mm -hmm. And um, in marriage counseling and marriage therapy, you kind of are kind of aware of the fact that something's broken or something's of concern and so you might present yourself to a therapist or a counselor and have a, a conversation and what I would call that is the sickness model and in marriage education it's the wellness model we're all familiar with going to say a yoga class or a uh, swimming class where you're kind of taking your body and saying I want to take care of it and maybe possibly get better and healthier. So that's what marriage education really is, is it's kind of going from good to great. It's kind of going from something that works well and seeing if you can uh, tune it up a little bit. And another differentiator I'd say with marriage education is that it's really not, much of it is not done one-on-one -on -one or myself and a couple. It's more of a group. Like let's all do these uh, communication exercises and you know do it on your own and let me you know see how you're doing and I can check in and help you out but I offer exercises and communication tools that really work uh, for a variety of people um, who are like I say just aware that they would like to take their marriage from good to great. That sounds excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Debbie, tell us a little bit about what you do. Sure. So parent coach is something that's relatively new. I'm not sure exactly what the history is, but there are not that many people who really know what a parent coach is because I tell people and they say, oh, tell me more. <laughs> so the, the, the idea behind it is if your kid has a problem in school, they'll go see the school counselor or the school. There are school psychologists now as well. And if somebody in your family is, is really kind of suffering with a mental health issue or, or is some sort of crisis mode, really, really, you know, kind of pretty far along on, on, on the process, they'll go see a therapist. So I'm not a therapist. I'm not a, you know, I don't have a doctorate or anything like that. But I do have a certification as a coach. And so I see a coach, a parent coach, is somewhere in the middle between that school psychologist or the school counselor and the therapist role. And um, the the parent coach, the object is to coach the parents in order to help them help their kids. Um, now, I could definitely work with kids too, but my, my primary goal is to empower parents because they're the ones who know their kid the best, and the object is to give them the skills and the tools that honestly no one's taught us, right? I mean, you know, Absolutely. kids don't come with manuals. <laughs> yeah. No well, one's <laughs> taken a parenting class, or very few people have. So my role is to educate the parents in how to deal with these, these kids. And I, I'm mostly focusing on parents with teenagers, but I can certainly help parents with younger children as well. But, um, you know, if, the, if they've got a teen and, and, you know, a nine or 10 or 10 year old as well, I can help them in those situations too. But, you know, if you've got a teenager living in your home, um, you don't always know who this person is. They're kind of like this alien being, and, and one day they're like this, and another day they're like that. And, and so I give the parents the skills and the tools that they need in order to figure out how to help their kids. Mm -hmm. And if we go back a little bit further, we can say, you know, all kids are struggling, and the reason they struggle is because they don't have good problem-solving skills. And so what the parent's job is to do is to teach the kids how to solve their own problems. And, um, 
you know, because what they'll do is they'll act out because they don't know what else to do. And so the parent, I, I'll teach the parents how to help their kids mm -hmm. figure out what else can I do when I get triggered by my little brother, or when I get triggered by the fact that I think something is unfair, or when I get triggered by um, the teacher who I know hates me, you know, those <laughs> kinds of situations. So I, I give the parents the skills and tools so that they can teach their kids. That sounds, that sounds great. It sounds like your, uh, the word wellness is kind of coming to me. Uh, also, okay. you know, that's sort of giving us the skills. I know it's true. Uh, kids don't come with manuals. Yeah. And you can say, oh, I'll go out and read books on parenting. But we know that we don't um, mm -hmm. so much. Or, and I, I find that uh, um, as a wellness nutrition um, coach that everybody is better when they have somebody coaching them through it. Everybody's right. better when it's hands on and with somebody with experience and sounds like you have a lot of experience helping people work through these and some great strategies for them to um, be the best parent they can be. Oh yeah, I've got, I've got some great strategies. And, and your point is exactly right. We all, you know, honestly, we all kind of need a coach, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Because if you go to talk to your, your sister or your brother or your parents or your neighbor, I mean, there's going to be some element of judgment and you're always going to be worried about how are they thinking about me? They must think I'm a terrible parent. You know, if you're out Absolutely. in the store and your kid has a hissy fit, <laughs> You're like, oh my gosh, everybody in the store thinks that I'm the world's worst parent. And there's a lot of guilt and judgment that goes along with that. I'm here to say, hey, it is not your fault. You don't know how to handle this because no one's taught you. And even if they taught you for your first child, you don't know how to handle it with your second and your third child because they're different. They're different. So um, the idea is just to be able to uh, um, give them, give the parents a non-judgmental observer person that they can turn to for support when they need support. Like for instance, I was talking to a friend and a couple of years ago they were struggling with a teenager who had pretty bad anorexia. So that's not necessarily a situation where a kid is acting out. That's a totally different situation. But I told her that I am now a parent coach and she said, oh my gosh, where were you when we were dealing with anorexia? If I had known that, I would have called you right away just because I needed support. Right. You know, obviously her daughter needed to work with a therapist because that was mm -hmm. a serious issue, mm -hmm. but the parent needed support. Mm -hmm. And the, this, this is the kind of thing that I can also offer in addition to dealing with resistant or difficult children. So thank you. Yeah. And, and Wendy, um, this is sort of making me think talking to Debbie about, I think we all know that, um, with kids, they go through many stages in life and that's why the teenage years are probably makes sense to me that you would put a lot of focus there. It's kind of one of the toughest times right. to get through. They're becoming young adults, but they're still kids, the whole thing. Right. Do marriages, would you say marriages have stages as well? Is that part of what you educate people on? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm glad that you brought that up because that's one of the main things of the, one of the main reasons that I got into this work and into this field is that discovery of the stages. We're all familiar with the honeymoon stage and maybe the seven year itch all those kind of things. And those are actually, they have some science behind those, obviously, the honeymoon stage. But the honeymoon stage actually can lead into a more um, uncomfortable stage. It's called the power struggle. And power struggle is very necessary to the growth and development of the marriage relationship. One of the bells that went off when I, when I started to un unpack this a little bit was that marriage is very much like human beings go through stages and they need to be, um, the awareness of those stages is key and how to actually promote growth and development in that stage rather than letting that stage frighten you. And one of the things, the comparison, interestingly, mm -hmm. you're talking about teenagers or adolescents, is we're very, um, as a society, as a, you know, as, as a culture, we're very comfortable with the fact when people say, um, oh, my kid's going through, you know, his voice is changing and he's very upset and he's very hard to get along with. We, you know, we're, we're comfortable about supporting a child through that. Maybe it's difficult and we need some coaching perhaps, but that's a common, everybody understands that. But we keep our um, marriage um, uh, friction under wraps and there's a sense of shame about that and there's also a sense of like gee we're doing an awful lot of you know tussling together we're fighting together we must be mismatched and that's when the bells really went off in my mind like do people know that in the third stage of marriage um, that that power struggle is important and that it's necessary and that it helps you get to that sweet spot on the other side of it I, there's some statistics, depends on who you read, but 60 to 70 percent of all divorces that are initiated are initiated in the power struggle stage because it's interpreted 
as mismatch, problematic, we never should have gotten married in the first place, when actually it's sort of the adolescence of the marriage relationship. Mm. It's a time when, yeah, it's difficult, and yeah, it's tough, but it's meant to be that way for very clear and specific reasons. And it's meant to be like that so that we can um, grow as individuals. So it's kind of an interesting thing that at that particular really difficult time, people choose to say, wrong, bad, we've got to separate and go our own ways. When actually, when you kind of shut the doors and gear up and keep working at it, you actually push through and come out bigger, stronger, and better, not only as a couple, but as an individual and as a person. It's, it's really kind of a magical time, but the support in the culture isn't there. So we, we don't cop to it, if you will, and we're going through it in a silent way, and, and, and people get miserable and sad for, if, if, if you knew that you needed clearer soul for your pimples, you go, I don't really like these pimples, but at least I have a strategy to take care of it and minimize it and work through it. And I can talk to my mom about it who said, oh, I remember those days. But we don't do that in marriages. We don't say, you know, did you have a hard time? You know, did you want to leave the guy? Actually, I, you know, I'm just going to interject here. I yeah. mean, one of the things, one of my pet peeves when it comes to marriage is people who are too vocal, the opposite of, of silence, uh, too vocal, because I've been, my husband and I have been married for over 26 years. I had, didn't mention that earlier. Yeah. Too vocal, too publicly about their problems. Oh, gosh. And that's a real, that's a real issue in marriages as, as well. I couldn't agree more. When mm -hmm. people throw one another under the bus, Oh yeah. my goodness, that's so painful. Isn't it painful to hear that it when somebody is. says Very something yeah. awful like, about their spouse? I don't want spouse. to hear about yeah. the terrible thing about your husband. Yeah. I really don't. And yeah, yeah. So exactly. So yeah. there's there's there are um, coping strategies or um, tools that I um, am so glad to now know about and so glad to put out there in the world that help people navigate through these things. And when you kind of pull the curtain back, as it were, and say to people, it's supposed to be like this, and they say, oh. One of my favorite analogies that I use is to say to people, if I were to tell you that you need to climb Mount Kilimanjaro tomorrow, you, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you would not come with your bikini and your flip-flops and your sunscreen and say, ready to go, right? Mm -hmm. You gear up. You gear up. And if people know that this phase of your relationship is going to be feel like Mount Kilimanjaro, it's going to have some rocky places and some difficulty, but the view at the top, awesome. So you gear up appropriately, you know? And so that's what I like to think of what I'm doing is to show you this is some gear that you can put on, and that way you won't be surprised when you show up at the foot of Mount Kilimanjaro with your flip-flops, you know? So I, I just really love the whole field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting to hear you say that. I think something that I hear people say a lot is if the marriage is good or the relationship is good, it shouldn't be work. Ah. Uh, right? Uh, you, know, you know who's written about that actually is um, the, uh, the book Mindset by Carol Dweck. Mm. And she ta Have oh, you read? I no. haven't yet. No. You, it's a great book. And she talks about how people have the minds, this either fixed or yes. um, flexible mindset. And the idea is. If it's, if it's supposed to be, it will be. That's the fixed mindset. And she talks about that in marriage as well as in like kind of personal success. Mm -hmm. And um, that's something I've, I've, you know, I work on with kids too, is just because you fail doesn't mean that you're a bad person right. and you'll never be able to succeed. And parents need to be able to give their kids the sense that, oh no, we're, you know, Failure is the way you learn. Yay, you failed. Cool. What are we going to do next? <laughs> yeah, right, you know? yeah, right. Whereas in schools, you know, I'm a longtime educator and I'm still yeah. complaining about this. In schools, if they fail once, that's it. They don't get, most of the time, they don't get another chance. Mm -hmm. You know, because maybe they'll get another chance to rewrite an essay or take, take one test during the semester or whatever it is. But generally speaking, if you fail, you fail. Right. And in life, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> you, you fail, you learn, you pick yourself up and you go on. And I think the same thing is true in marriages too. Absolutely. It's not fixed. But you're, that's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, exactly. People do have a very particular way of looking at things. And if you don't fit that mold, I'm a failure. Other pe yeah, it's, 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 it's difficult. And so that's why the whole world of marriage education, which is kind of going, uh, giving you some, what I like to also think of as core strength, right? You go to the mm. gym or you go to, the, to yoga classes and develop your core. And that way you're able to weather a lot of injury when you're, when you're physically at your core is 
at its best. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. You're able to weather a lot of the ups and downs of marriages, which again, they're normal. The ups and downs of marriages have a place. So anyway, I really, it, it's, it's been a great field and a great way to, um, to talk with people and to kind of just work with people. So I've enjoyed it terribly much. Yeah. 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 So, um, so Debbie, tell me, uh, what can somebody expect, you know, or what can they, what would be their expectation working with you? Mm -hmm. I know something that actually, a <coughs> quote from, I think it was Clint Eastwood said about parenting, and I always liked it, is what you put out, you're going to get back. Okay. You know, and um, so I'm just wondering mm -hmm. what kind of, uh, if I'm going, if I'm talking to you, what can I sure. expect to? Well, a parent would come, and um, I do give a complimentary session to start out with. Make sure that we, you know we're on the same page, and that we're mm -hmm. that this is the right fit for us to be working together. And um, what I do is I ask them to envision what it is they really want to see. What what do you what do you picture? What what would be the ideal thing? And in, in your home life, what would this look like? And what are the obstacles getting in the way of that? And then what are we? What can we? What kind of a plan can we make? And I actually have a five-step process, um, and it's cheerfully called the Pied Piper Parenting Model, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I'm also a semi-professional musician. And uh, the idea behind it is that, um, as a parent, you want your kid to follow you. I mean, you are the leader in your home, and your kid should follow you. And so um, I, I give parents tunes that they can play, you know, strategies that they can try. And that's just kind of a, you know, a fun play on my own background. But also yeah. I think it, it, it is a good picture. So Wendy, can you tell me if I, if I come to your class, what would I be able to take away? What, what, what could I expect to take away from your class? Oh, well, one of the things I'm, I really value highly is that at the end of any one of the presentations that I give is that you're going to be able to walk away with something that you can use that day or that night. And it's important to make a distinction that not people, people who come to the classes that I run are not necessarily coming as a couple. And so you can come and gain value if, if just one of you is motivated or see some uh, reason to come and, and get something out of it. So you don't have to um, make sure that the other person's ready at the same place that you are. So that's something. But um, so yeah, you know, what I'd like to think is that you could walk away with something that you've written out that says, I'm going to do these three things starting today and see where, see where it goes, see where it lands. Um, it, it's also a high value of mine that I only use curriculum and um, strategies that have been tested in, in a scientific way that are used by social scientists. So um, I only work with uh, curriculum and information that is really cultivated from the best of the best, uh, people that have uh, really done the footwork and made sure that this is applicable to a large so portion of society. Um, so that that's one thing, and like I say, you don't have to come with your partner. Um, and one thing I'm cultivating is getting a little bit more information on same-sex marriages as well. Um, there, certainly most of the literature is with one man, one woman, but um, I'm looking to um, uh, unpack and see where I can add value to long-term committed relationships that may be same-sex marriages. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Yeah. Has there any tip we could walk away with today? Could you give us one? Oh my goodness, any tip that you could walk away with today? Well, I guess I, I talked about it a little bit before, which is to be aware that there are stages to the marriage and don't take it for granted if something's coming up that's negative or wildly positive that it's unique to you to kind of just wonder, say, gee, l let me learn a little bit more about uh, about uh, the stages of, of, a, of a relationship and that maybe some of this hard time is meant to grow me up in a particular way or to grow us up in a particular way. And another thing I'd like to talk about, tell you, is that it's commonly understood that the uh, divorce rate in the United States of America is about 50%. And that's been a statistic that's been bandied about for many a year, and it says it doesn't change. And actually, I don't know if you're familiar, but currently, or in the past few years, there's been a statistic about autism being caused by um, uh, vaccines. And so some of that science has been kind of debunked a little bit to say we're not quite sure that that's as clear as it was and so people are, there's a little bit of controversy. Well I'd like to throw a little bit of fire and controversy on that statistic about, um, about divorce rate. It's actually based on um, poor science and maybe one study and it's been replicated and replicated and repeated and repeated. So it's actually closer to around 28 to 34 percent is really the amount of people that get divorced. 
And the takeaway out of that is that if you're in trouble and you're feeling like, oh my goodness, and in your head you're saying, well, it was a 50-50 shot anyway. No, it's about a 75-80 shot. <laughs> so push through that difficulty, push through the difficult portions and get to the other side because you have a much greater chance of actually um, enjoying one another and, uh, and being rebonded together. So don't let the, the friction of the difficulty get you down quite as easily as it might have. But get some help, maybe. Too. And yeah, yeah, get some help. Yeah, <laughs> right. come, come see a marriage educator, or yeah. But absolutely, but don't let that fifty percent um, uh, death rate of uh, marriages throw you. It's it's actually not accurate. It's closer to thirty percent. Hmm. So. That is very exciting yeah. and encouraging. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And Debbie, we only have a few minutes left. Yeah. But any tip you would like to? Yes. So here's the big thing. One, um, I mean, there's a ton I could share, but I'll just give parents one really quick thing, and that is never try to have a conversation with your child when either you or your child is freaking out. <laughs> you know, if your child comes in and it's after, it's after curfew and you've been waiting up till one in the morning, <laughs> you do not say to your child at that point, where were you? I've been waiting. You don't get into any of that. You look calmly at your child. You take a deep breath and you say, I'm glad you're home safely. We will discuss this tomorrow. Go to bed. End. And then the next day, when both of you are calm, then you sit down, and I have a procedure that you can go through that will help this not happen so much in the future. But um, you can even begin to have a, a rational conversation if that part of your brain <laughs> is activated. <laughs> is activated right, right. Because when the emotional part of your brain is, is freaking out, mm -hmm. the logical part of your brain cannot speak loudly enough for either you or your child yeah. to hear. Mm -hmm. And if you come across to your child loudly and with emotion at that point, they will just, you know, they're going to shut you shut off. Shut down. And that's yeah. it. That's it. So that's the quick tip for today. I like it. Yeah. Excellent. Thank yeah. you. So if I want to get more information about either one of you, mm -hmm. how do I do that? Sure. So you can find me at uh, youcanraisegreatkids.com. Ah, okay. And you can find me at connectagain.com. So C O N N E C T A G A I N dot org. Dot org. I was dot org. Say, yeah. Thank you. you. Yeah, it's dot org. So connectagain.org. Thanks for asking. Thank you. Thank you for being with here and talking with us today. Again, mm -hmm. this is Linda Tai, and I'm here with Debbie Owen and Wendy Williams. Thanks very much, and see you soon.